Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The Master's Voice is a written blog resource that you can find at www.the-masters-voice.com. That's where the majority of the written prophecies can be found. The Master's Voice Prophecy Blog is also a visual and audio resource. Please look in the drop down description menu underneath the video to get all the information that you need about where to follow the blog. You can follow the blog on social media. You can follow the blog here on YouTube. There's a Spanish language language channel. There's also alternate channels on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon. So you're welcome to follow along there. And I'm continuing with the second prophecy. I said that I had two prophecies to do that the Lord gave me back to back, February the 23rd and February the 24th. And both these themes are not new. The surprising thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Lord is able to present the same information in different ways. And that's because God's eye is inexhaustible. God can see so many different angles of the same thing. We are human. We are the ones who are finite. But nothing is ever commonplace with God. And so I'm going back over old ground that I've covered in multiple prophecies and concerning the topic of this one, which is speaking about Kamala Harris. There are, for her alone, there are 11 prophecies since November 2020. So I collected those prophecies and I'm going to read them at the end of this video so that you can at least know that there are 11 witnesses. This is the 12th one that is solely dedicated to Kamala Harris and in particular stating that Kamala Harris is going to be the president of this country. So you might hear it now and think, oh, but this is no new news. We see that Joe Biden is falling to pieces, but Joe Biden wasn't falling to pieces in November 2020. Joe Biden was looking the strongest that he'd ever looked. In fact, when that man was um, campaigning, he had a youth and vigor to him that is now absolutely missing from any kind of public appearance that he's making. But back then, all the people who were rooting for Joe Biden, he looked like a strong and a viable candidate to them, and I guess to them, and I guess that's why they voted for him. But now that we are here, now that several years have passed and certain things are now obvious, this is when, of course, everybody is now saying, yes, I always will st say this and I will maintain this for the integrity of the Lord Jesus Christ first and then this blog second. It's not prophecy if you're only saying it when it's happen, when it's happening. It's prophecy when you saw it before because the eye of the Lord highlighted it to you, showed it to you, shared it to you, and then you were faithful to follow through and come out and see it at the time that it didn't seem viable. So yes, Kamala Harris will be president of this country, but what is not known is that she will be a very harsh one Kamala Harris will be a very um, controlling and authoritarian president. She will be a very ham-fisted leader. And she's also going to be quite cunning and quite crafty. And towards the end of whatever term she's in, this woman will consolidate power almost exclusively to herself. And she will be extremely cruel. But I always ask the Lord... Father, is there anything you want me to say? Is there anything you want me to say before I start the message? And as soon as I was praying and I was asking the Lord this time, what he said is, tell them to brace for a hard impact. Tell them to brace for a hard impact. Tell them to prepare for a very hard impact that is coming soon. So the Lord has not given me any time, but the word soon is quite easy. You can Google and find out what it means. It means near to come it means imminent in some cases but soon means not as far off as you think and definitely not as far off as most people would like god says that we should brace for a hard impact and you've probably just watched the previous prophecy um it's not a part one to this these are standalone prophecies but one thing i know about the heavenly father is that when he's bringing a topic and he keeps speaking on different dimensions of the same thing back to back, close to close, close to one another like that, then God is definitely saying, put your eye here, put your attention here, focus here, because I'm saying something here that if you miss it, 
the price that you will pay later to get it will be so steep. So he said to tell him, brace for a hard impact. And that hard impact is coming soon. And he said, tell them to keep their eyes on me. Tell them to keep their eyes on me. The Lord says that there's going to be a lot of hardships up ahead. And he said, tell them that they are going to suffer losses, but to not grieve the losses and to not grieve the changes. Tell them to fix their eyes on me and to be very focused on me and I will bring them through it. So that is the word I'm giving you before I read out this prophecy to you. A hard impact, it means a jarring situation. It means something or in a multitude of some things or a whole string of events, or it could just be one catastrophic event or one shock that is going to happen to us here in the United States. And God says it's going to be a hard impact on us and it's going to be jarring and the remedy for that, the antidote for that is not to say, no, it's not going to happen. No, I don't believe it. The remedy for that is he said to keep their, keep our eyes on him. And that in itself is not as easy as it sounds. We really need to be thoughtful. We need to be more deliberate about the things that God says to us. When God talks to us, what do we hear? Do you just hear one or two sentences and it's like, oh, God says it's a hard impact, but keep your eyes on him. What is a hard impact? Have you ever seen a truck going into the side of a bridge? Have you ever seen a truck that was full of carrying goods, losing control and skidding on ice and going into the side of a mountain? Have you ever looked at that? Have you ever covered your mouth in shock when two cars rammed into each other and you see people running there to see if they can save anybody and then all of a sudden people are running back because there's a terrible explosion. Do you apply your mind when you hear these things? Do you know what a hard impact is? It's something that can break bone. It's jarring, it's hard. And then the way that God says is the way you're gonna get through that hard stuff is that you're gonna keep your eyes on me. And that's a tall order. Are you mature enough to keep your eyes on God when it hurts? Are you mature enough to keep your eyes on God when you lose family? Are you mature enough to keep your eyes on God when your bank crashes and your life savings are in there and all you have at home is like $400? Because you thought that $400 was it that you should keep on hand and then the bank shuts and there's a bank run and you don't get anything and then it tells you, oh, I'm sorry, we're no longer liquid. Are you able to keep your eyes on God through painful things well he says that that's what we're going to have to do and immediately you hear that you auto, you automatically know that something is required a step up is required i spoke of the step up in the previous video that is called a dream of new america so if you haven't seen that video yet this is a second video and to better understand this video will be better if you watch the first one it's called a dream of new america same same look so you can't miss it so he says that we should keep our eyes on him. This means that you have to be determined to focus on God through personal pain. You have to be determined to focus on God through distractions. You have to be determined basically that nothing is going to get you out of the groove, especially if you are new to Christianity or if you have been lazy with your Christianity and you don't have a groove then you definitely need to dig for that extra and you need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to please help you by being transparent and saying, I did not store up any oil in the good times. And now this channel continues to throw me, throw me, throw me, but I refuse to let these waves carry me out. I'm trying to swim back to you, Jesus. Please help me. The more transparent and honest you are in your prayers with the Lord, the much more eager and willing he will be willing to help you because transparent and honest prayers, besides only containing repentance, they contain the truth about who you are and what you have done thus far. When it comes to God, who have you taken God to be? Who have you taken the Holy Spirit to be? Who have you taken the Lord Jesus Christ to be? If you're just honest about that, they are much more willing to involve themselves, to walk next to you, to help you because you're humble and you're admitting I'm weak and I don't have it all together. I'm not trying to be the Bible master. I'm just asking for help. Lord, can you please help me? The Lord is always near to people who are contrite and the humble person God will never ignore. And so that is the word that God has, that something is coming and it's going to be harder than we think it is because people will say, oh no, that's not prophecy. Yeah, well, when you're living through it, 
masters and maestros, we will all see what was what. The title of this prophecy is Kamala Harris and the Beast Part 2. And the date for this prophecy is February the 24th, 2024. Kamala Harris and the Beast Part 1 was done, I think it was October, October 2022. So it's definitely over a year old. And now this second prophecy has come concerning this woman. The first group of prophecies that I did concerning Kamala Harris were done in November 2020. And that was during the time of the November 2020 election. Things were hot and heated and America was on tenter hooks as people went to the ballot boxes between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. There was a lot of talking on both sides, high expectations on both sides, a very high stakes election with President Trump as the incumbent with a very massive support base in the United States and around the world at that time. And so there was a lot at stake. And as these elections were going on, the Lord started talking to me from about the 3rd of November and started to talk to me in a way that really surprised me because God was not talking too much about Donald Trump and he wasn't talking too much about Joe Biden. The Lord was speaking exclusively about Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is the person that the Holy Spirit was focused on. Kamala Harris, the barely made it on the ticket vice president, is the person that the Holy Spirit was highlighting. She was the one that I was seeing in dreams. The Lord was telling me that Kamala Harris is going to be president of the United States. This is what he was telling me all the way back, the 3rd, 4th of November 2020. And how God started out, the first prophecy was called No More Grace. And the Lord said that he was not going to give America a grace period anymore. And I had been praying for America to have an extended grace period. I have never lived under any kind of rock concerning who Donald Trump is to this nation because the Lord has always been saying that that man is not his choice for president. Many people hold the alternate view. I know the truth and I have spoken the truth here boldly multiple times to extreme backlash and it changes nothing. Because the Lord says that all the accolades that were laid upon President Donald Trump are the accolades of men. That men will always find something to worship. As long as people don't want to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, they will always find something to worship. They will always find something to exalt and then bow their knees. We were created to worship, but people don't want to create worship who we were created to worship. People want to constantly raise up idols in the earth and we worship that person. And so... The Lord said that Donald Trump was a respite for America. A respite is just basically giving somebody who's already losing a break. That's it. You're behind on your car payments. You're behind on your house payments. You're behind on your whatever payments, rent payments. And then the person that you owe money says, you know what? I'm going to catch you up two months or I'm going to give you a break in the payments. Or I'm going to break up your payments like that to make it less, to make it less difficult for you. That's a respite. You're already behind and you can't catch a break. And then someone says, you know what? I'm going to cut you some slack. That's what it is. Donald Trump was a pause for America. Donald Trump was basically a four-year break for God to see if the nation could get itself back on track to focusing on God, to repenting of sin, to becoming righteous, so that God would perhaps have cause to avert judgment that has been hanging over this country for decades. The judgment that I speak here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog is not a brand new judgment. This is not judgment that I've cooked up at home here um, in this apartment. This is judgment that has come out of the mouths of people that the Lord has sent, both native sons and people from outside the country, to prophesy to this nation that if America did not turn from the way that she has been going for decades, that he, God, was going to judge her harshly and he was going to judge her in terms of war, letting her fall to her enemies, and fire. None of these themes are new. Donald Trump was just a pause to see if America would get it. America did not get it. America thought, well, we finally got a good old boy. We finally got a son who looks just like us. He's a chip off the old block. And God says that that is just typical Israel behavior. The Lord says that Donald Trump was Saul. He gave this nation Saul. Saul was a terrible king. He started off well, but very soon his internal weaknesses and his internal flaws were manifest. And then they colored his rule. 
And basically Saul was just a reflection of what was in Israel's heart at that time. Israel rejected God because they wanted a man to follow. And America rejects God because they want Donald Trump to follow. And so the Lord came at a time of prayer and the prophecy was so heavy on me that I, it, I really felt like something was going to happen that day. It was November the 3rd, I think. The prophecy is called No More Grace and God just said, um, do not be like them. Do not continue to ask me for more time because all they do when I give them more time is they become more sinful. They become more lustful, they become more wicked, and they increase their unrighteousness until it comes up to the heavens. So God said that America would not get any more grace period from him, any more rest. He said from that moment, November the 3rd, 2020, he said, I'm going to allow this country to fall into the hands of her enemies and her enemies are going to be able to do whatever they want with her. And so that was November the 3rd. And then on November the 4th, I was having dreams, I think, where I saw Kamala Harris. And she was saying, I'm the president of the United States. I was thinking, what are you talking about, lady? This presidential race is between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. You're barely on the ticket. You're just an add-on, you know, to get a certain kind of demographic and a certain type of vote. You're not the president. But she kept insisting. She said, I'm Kamala Harris and I am the president of the United States. And then from that time on, November 5th, November 7th, all the way up to, I think, the 10th, I was constantly having these dreams and the Lord kept speaking to me even when I was awake. He would say things like, Celestial, this is Kamala's election. This is Kamala's election. I'd be thinking, Lord, all right, Lord. And I would jot these things down. And basically, um, there was a series of dreams that I had, and I will list them for you at the end, but that's just to give you context. That at the time that nobody was looking at Kamala Harris, at the time that nobody was looking at her, everybody was looking at Joe Biden and Donald Trump, the Lord Jesus Christ said that Kamala Harris was going to be president of this country, saying that, Barack, um, saying that Joe Biden is going to bring two people with him into the White House, one of those people would be Kamala Harris and the other person would be Barack Obama. And so this, today is February the 25th. It's February the 25th of like three something. But yesterday, yesterday I was doing Bible reading. <coughs> Excuse me, please. A little bit hoarse now. Yesterday I was doing Bible reading and the Lord just suddenly started to speak about something totally different. I was reading in a different part of the Bible and he suddenly said, speak to them about the change of government that is coming to the United States. And I remember that just the night before I had had that dream of how militarized America is going to be. America is not going to be the freedom nation that we know. It's going to be very different. So the Lord started to say, speak to them. Speak to them about the change of government coming to the United States. And I knew the Lord is going to give me a message. So I got my implements and I, to, to write. And this is what the Lord gave me. Speak about the change of government coming to the United States. There is a new government coming to the USA. A top-down authoritarian form of government that operates on favoritism, nepotism, instead of involvement by the citizen and interconnected reliance on a three-branch system of government. So there's a new system of governance that's going to come to America. I've been discussing this for many years, giving many, many descriptions of how this government go is going to be. This government has gone by several names here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. One of those names is the rogue government, saying that there's going to be a rogue government in the United States. Another of those names has been the Beast Government. Another of those names has been the Revelation 13 Government. Another of those names has been a Renegade Government. And now the Lord is simply saying a top-down government, authoritarian, meaning that there's no input from the bottom. There's no input from the people. There's no involvement where the people get to be a part of the system of government. The people will be told what the government is doing and the people will be told this is your role in it and here's where you fall in line this is your part in the play and the government's basically going to write the play direct the play execute the play and at the end of it all execute people as well this is going to be a 
government that conducts pogroms. Please excuse the noise. The government is definitely going to overstep. The government is going to overreach. The government is going to severely abuse power. These things, I've been saying them for a very long time, but now God is saying that this new government is going to come in and it's going to be working with favoritism and nepotism. Favoritism is literally what it sounds like. You have your favorites. You pick people based on emotional choices. You don't necessarily pick them based on their credentials. You don't pick them based on their years of experience. You don't pick them because they're the right person for the job. You pick them because, hey, you know, that's my, that's my favorite movie star, and so now I'm going to make him a governor or something like that. This is just an example. You pick people based off of emotionally charged choices. You don't pick people because they're the best pick. You don't pick them because they stand out. You don't pick them because of merit. And nepotism is the same thing. This is promoting your friends. This is promoting family. This is promoting blood-related members into political positions instead of giving it to the right person. So immediately you are hearing the Lord describe for us here a very fatty form of government where you pick those who are close to you and you keep them close and then you shut avenues whereby ordinary people, well-deserving people, hardworking people, qualified people, even long-serving people in previous governments will be able to come back. And he also says that there's going to be less involvement by the citizen in the nation, and there's also going to be less interconnected reliance on a three-branch system of government. Traditionally, it's supposed to be the judiciary, it's supposed to be the legislative branch, it's supposed to be the executive branch, and these three branches, they work together. If they work together seamlessly, then that's a very healthy country. If there's competition between the branches, this is where you might see political instability, you might see economic breakdowns, you might see coup, coups and things like that. The three branches are not operating. But what God is saying here is that America is going to basically do away with needing two of the branches. America is not going to really rely on a healthy functioning three branch system. It's going to start to be very strong on the executive branch and it's going to be very, very much less on the judicial branch and the legislature. So the Lord then said, tell them about the loss of political power in the legislature and the judiciary. Both of them will atrophy until they're little more than figurehead fixtures of the U.S. government. To atrophy means to shrink and to become weak. Atrophy describes the action of a limb that you are not using until it becomes useless. If somebody was to tie your arm to your body for a week, that arm will be so weak and so withered compared to your straight arm that's allowed to have movement and blood flow. And so God was saying, tell them about the loss of political power in the legislature and the judiciary, both of them are going to shrink until they're hardly anything more than figurehead fixtures within the U.S. government. So not necessarily doing away with them, but just stripping them of power, leeching them of power until they're there more in name only, but they're not very effective. And it's a very dangerous situation when a, when a country has especially a court system that is only a dummy court system. In countries like that, they usually kill the citizens because you cannot get a fair trial. The judges are already bought or the judges are afraid. You can't get a fair trial and it's a highly risky place to live. Same with if the lawmakers are being shackled, if the lawmakers are being bound. And so God was saying, Senators will only be needed for brief consultations and appearances. So purely for looks. That's what the senators will be needed for when they'll say, like, I'm standing here. Um, you'll, have, you'll have Kamala standing there and saying, you know, I met with a few senators. And then she's going to have a few key guys there. And they're going to be standing there like, yes, we met with her. But they didn't really do anything. They were probably called into a private session and told, I want to do this and this and this. And you guys are going to see to it that it happens. Say senators will only be needed for brief consultations, public appearances, or to rubber stamp executive decisions. The immense power 
that a U.S. senator enjoys now will be stripped away and will be replaced with figurehead power. And the prophecy is not coming to mind at the moment, but I will look for it and link it below and I'll leave a little tag so you can know this is the part I'm talking about. Where I was saying that senators in particular are going to lose so much power that they're going to just be drawing some kind of nominal salary as a token. And I was saying in that prophecy, I said, so senators, enjoy the power that you have now because later you're either going to be defunct, you're going to be unemployed, or you're simply going to be there as little bobbleheads to nod to whatever the executive says. They will be asked for an opinion. They will play an advisory role. But in real terms, the executive is going to have very sharp teeth while the other branches will be effectively turned into toothless bulldogs. Then the Lord said, tell them that Kamala Harris will be president of America and with her will come regime change and regime government. Tell them Kamala is going to be president of the USA and she's bringing regime change and regime government. Now, a lot of people, because of TV, because of news, because terms just get tossed around, they just say, oh, that's a regime, that's a regime. But did you ever take the time to look up what a regime is? Regime is a form of government that is extremely strict. In fact, the word regime, when you define it, it means a method. That's one of its primary definitions. A regime is a method. So if you see somebody and you ask her, oh, you look so great, what's your skincare regime? Or you see somebody who's so fit, what's your gym regime? When this person starts talking about a regime, they're actually detailing for you a very strict methodology, a very strict process that they do not deviate from very often. Athletes have regimes. They do the same thing day after day, week after week, month after month, because that's the only way of ensuring that their physical bodies, which is the major asset that they use in life, that their physical asset stays in peak shape and offers peak performance. So when someone says regime government, they're telling you that this is a government that does not break from character. Now, America is definitely going to break from character from being a democratic republic and a free nation and a nation that supports laws, at least on paper. And there's going to be a sharp breakaway from that into a very North Korea, very China, very old style Russia type of government. So there's definitely going to be that sharp break away from that. But once the government gets into its overreaching illegal activities, it's not going to break character anymore. It's going to stay in character as that. And so Kamala is bringing regime government. I've explained it to you, but she's also bringing regime change. That's what I've just explained, that America is going to break away from what she's always done, her old regime, which is go to court and sue someone if you have a case, if you have a grievance, bring it and we'll have overseeing bodies. We have watchdogs watching watchdogs. We have internal commissions and all that. That stuff is going to go away and there's going to be a regime change into a regime government. And so in a regime government, the power doesn't change hands easily. And all the checks and balances that make sure that the government stays interrelated and accountable to one another are not present. This means that basically when the executive, when the White House starts to grow outside of its mandated space, no one is going to be able to stop it. No one is going to be able to say anything. The judges will be trying to fight for their lives and I guess they'll just be bought out or threatened or whatever will happen. They will be toothless and the lawmakers will be toothless. The Lord says the U.S. government will have very concentrated power in the executive branch and the president that we will see this the most with is Kamala Harris. So it's not as if to say that the United States hasn't had strong presidents in the past. Strong cabinets, especially those presidents that were wartime presidents. No, God is saying that we're going to see something brand new, where we're going to see excessively concentrated power happening with the executive branch 
to almost the exclusion of the other two. And it's not going to happen overnight. Don't expect to see that when this woman gets into power, she'll get sworn in. The next thing you know, Senate is closed and stuff like that. It's not going to be like that. God says that the person we're going to see this with the most is Kamala Harris. This is compared to her predecessors. So you have to have understanding when you're listening. Hers is a top-down government where she was going to work less with lawmakers than any other president before her. And so when the Lord was telling me this and I'm writing it down, I started to hear Kamala say this. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's figure out a way and get this done. This woman is not going to come and say, I am Kublai Khan and start to say, I forbid this and I forbid that. There's a language that goes with this thing that the Bible calls peace and safety. There's a way to present things. There's a way that you put it across where you don't look like a slavering savage from the forest that is going to say, get it done by midnight or everyone's head comes off. No, there's a way to present things where it looks like it's multilateral cooperation, where it looks like, oh no, everybody gets a say here. But actually there's only one pressure point that's being applied and it will be coming from the commander in chief who's going to be uh, a woman. And so let's get it done, she will say. And then she's going to end up writing an executive order to accomplish her object objectives instead of working with the lawmakers or working with the courts. And she's going to use this phrase, let's get it done. Here's the whole sentence that the Lord gave me. This is when she's asked. So as you listen to this, when she's asked, but why, why did you do this? Why did you decide to proceed this way? What, what, what was the rationale behind that? This is what she's going to say. Uh, we, we needed to get it done. We looked at the numbers and we evaluated the situation and we decided that the quickest way to get things moving uh, was the way that we chose. The normal route, the normal route, obviously this is working with the lawmakers. The normal route was something that we considered but in the end, due to time constraints and just for the good of the United States, we decided on this way because we needed to get it done. So what God is promoting here, what God is premiering here for us before it happens is the particular language that you can expect to hear coming out of a Kamala Harris White House. We were working against time. We were working with budgetary constraints. We knew that it was going to take a long time with the senators and the house. We considered it. It's the normal way. We're not ignorant. We know how the government works. We found the government working a certain way when we got here, but for the good of the United States, we needed to get this done. This is justifiable cause. This will be a white house of justifiable cause to put it in simpler terms. The ends justifies the means. We had to make an omelet, so we broke a few eggs. This is how Kamala Harris is going to justify using the executive order pen a little too freely. And two prophecies for that you can look at is, I think it's Kamala Harris and the Beast part one. You can also look at the break, the brick breaker game. Um, oh, another one is a broken rule of law. Definitely in that prophecy, a broken rule of law um, the Lord showed me Kamala Harris and she had the constitution in front of her and she was scribbling all over it with a big black marker. She was scribbling all over it, crossing out whole provisions and then writing some stuff on top of the constitutional document. She was not writing on a copy. She was writing on the actual thing. And I have been saying here for at least since 2020 that the U S constitution is going to end up completely useless. It's going to end up defunct is going to end up losing all its potency, all its powers. They're constantly going to un undermine that document in the years ahead. They may not repeal an amendment. They may not repeal anything in it per se. What they will do is they will just make a ton of small little laws that will ring fence a particular amendment. Gun laws is definitely one of them. They're going to make small little adjustments here, here, here until the actual second amendment becomes completely useless. It's useless. It's already becoming useless here in New York City. If they say that this is a gun-free zone and a gun-free zone and that's a gun-free zone, then once they make everywhere in the state a gun-free zone, then the only place you can take your gun is your house. And then 
some people may not feel that that's giving them enough use of their Second Amendment rights. So, um, regime governments don't change hands easily. We've discussed that. Checks and balances will go away, and Kamala Harris is going to greatly drive her government forward through unilateral decisions. She will make the decisions, her and her advisors, and they may work with the courts and they may work with the lawmakers, but increasingly, God says that she will not. Efficacy and wanting to avoid red tape will be given as the reason why the normal channels are not being followed. And for a season, people are going to believe it until they see how it backfires on them. So she's going to say that it was more efficient this way. And, you know, I just work better with a small team. And most importantly, she will have results to point to. She will have results to point to. Efficacy means that you can do a thing and you can do it well and the results are visible. The results are tangible. You can see them. And if there's one thing that people love in this modern world, it is results. So as long as someone keeps posting results, they're going to tell you, aren't you happy with the new pipeline? Aren't you happy with the new roads? Can't you see that we're getting more lunches to kids in schools? Once they have results to post, they will tell you that my way of doing it is efficient. And this is how all true and good dictators are born. If you're going to be a good dictator, you're just going to wake up and shoot people up. Everyone will know, hmm, that's a tyrant. The best dictators are born slowly. They are hatched like chicken eggs. And usually they get the people to sit on the egg ignorantly until the very day that they are ready to pull off their face and uncover who they really are. And so God says that for a season, people will believe because Kamala will get results. She absolutely will get results and people will believe what she's saying until they see how it backfires on them. In other words, Mrs. Kamala Harris is going to build a cage and convince the majority of people to get in that cage until the day she slams the door and says, you're not coming out of the cage. God says how she will get it done. Please remember, we had to get it done. We decided that this was the best way to get it done. How she's going to get it done is that she's going to make unilateral decrees, just her, and one-man decisions that leave no room for Congress to do much except argue or agree. Congress will either have to argue with this woman when she's president, and in the end she's going to go ahead and do it anyway, what she wanted to do, or Congress will have to agree. And at least when they agree with her, the Lord says that then she'll be able to do what she wants and the lawmakers at least will be able to pretend that they had some say in the decision. She's going to be a one-man show with a very tight click around her that can't be broken. And more and more, this will cause friction between the different arms of government than ever before. A one-man show with a tight click. So she's going to be in the center and then because of, we spoke of it in the beginning, nepotism and also favoritism, she's going to basically pick a team that will ring fence her. Now, God says that conflict is going to come from that and friction because the different arms of government are going to be trying to say, can I get an audience with the president? Maybe the chief justice wants to have a word. Maybe the speaker of the house, the majority whip of either side will say, well, I want to, I want to have a word with her. And then they're not going to be able to get that audience. And this is going to cause unrest. This is going to cause what kind of secret society is this in the White House where we can't even get a word with the president? The press might feel the same. We can't even get to, you know, interview the president, even though they hardly get to see the one that we have right now. So friction is going to be a part of this government. And this woman is going to be unbothered by friction because from what you can hear so far, she's not going to let that stop her from achieving her objectives. And you're going to hear why very soon. God says more and more, you're going to see that it's Kamala Harris who's actually behind bill proposals. More and more, you will see Kamala Harris being the one to propose a bill or to propose reform or to suggest it and then sit on top of the lawmakers to make sure that they get it done. More and more, you're going to see her putting pressure to make sure that the suggestions she makes get passed, and she's going to be heavily involved in the whole process, like her influence must be felt throughout the process. So it's the lawmakers, it's Congress that are supposed to propose bills, debate it, and then 
decide that they're going to put it through or not, and then it ends up on the president's, president's desk for signing. And the president does have a reserved power. The president can't veto it, but unless there's overwhelming reasons to do so, that's not usually what happens. The two arms of government and even within the House, within the House and, and the Senate, they're supposed to be working together ostensibly to reach, to reach best outcomes for people. But God says that you're going to see the White House generating a lot of bill proposals. So not exactly writing them, because I think that's illegal, but definitely being the driving force and saying, why don't we get that done? Why don't we have Senator so-and-so uh, draft that up and then and see who we can get to back him up? So this is manipulation coming from outside when it's not supposed to be coming from outside. Instead of waiting for the final thing, organic bills to come, there's going to be uh, pitches they're going to be pitching ideas and things like that from the White House, suggesting it, and then kind of trying to ram ramrod it through, trying to push it through by sitting on top of the lawmakers and saying and calling people up and saying, what's taking so long? And you guys are debating it for, for far too long. Heavily involved influence. This is called duress. And this means that the laws are not going to be genuine. They're going to be coming from a place of personal agendas, White House agendas that may not always match and probably, in fact, will not match the best interests of the American people in the long term. God says that the White House will leak into Congress and the lawmakers will give strong pushback when they feel their corner of the playground being invaded, which is understandable. When they feel that their power is being hampered, questioned, and eroded, they're going to fight back. So you're just looking for more chaos in the American government, basically, when Kamala Harris comes in. This is what the Lord is saying. You're looking for more chaos. You're looking for more explosive headlines. You're looking for the media to just pump all this out and increase the sense of insecurity in the nation. God says that she's going to be top down. I said it. Now let's get it done. And she's going to be very hands on. And she's going to be nothing like this quiet backdoor role that she's playing now. So please hear this so that you can know what you're seeing when you see it in the future. She's not going to be a quiet background player. She's going to be all in hands on. She will be extremely different, rolling up her sleeves to get to work from day one. But by the time a certain time period has passed, people will realize that they hate the work that has been done. So this is the same impression that Barack Obama gave people. Please go back to the prophecy that is called Brace for Impact, because in that prophecy, I said that I saw Kamala Harris with a very expensive black earpiece in her ear. And the Lord revealed to me that when Kamala Harris's turn comes at that in the White House, the person who's going to be coaching her step for step and line for line is none other than Barack Obama. You hear the Lord detailing that she's going to be rolling up her sleeves to get to work. She's going to be busy, very busy, hands on, involved. And this is the exact impression that Barack Obama gave throughout his presidency. He had a habit of rolling up his sleeves because people subconsciously connected with that act because you roll up your sleeves when you're busy you roll up your sleeves when you say i'm about to get my hands dirty i'm about to go all in people greatly connected with that aesthetic god may not be saying that she's going to physically roll up her sleeves that may be too much of a copycat move but in terms of being busy in terms of being evolved in terms of saying let's get this thing on the road People are going to be initially fooled by this because they are used to her playing this passive, quiet role now. She doesn't do much now. And so when she suddenly seems galvanized and back to life, people are going to say, you know what? We did a great thing. I'm glad we bet on her. She, she was a sleeping volcano after all. Look at her go. But he says that when a certain time period has passed, Kamala will tell us basically, let's get to work. And then there's going to be a lot of hammering and nails and all that cartoon smoke. But the Lord is saying that when a certain time period has passed and the cartoon smoke subsides, people are going to take a look at what work has been done. They're going to take a look at how different America is and they will hate, this is capital H-A-T-E, they will hate the work that has been done. Euphoria will accompany her, her into the White House at first, but remorse and regret will set in like a cancer before too many years have passed. 
She will come out of the stall like a racehorse, ready to work, and she will put through a number of proposals that will end up securing a very strong power base for herself. Kamala Harris is a beast government president. She's not an American president. She represents the start of the beast system. This means that people should expect things to be very different with her and also less accommodating. The government during her time will be less transparent, less vocal, not less vocal in terms of speech, not less vocal in terms of talking to us. When a government is top down, that government is constantly speaking to the people, informing them. It is not engaging them. It is not telling us, let us know how you feel and write in and go to the special interest groups and we, we're interested to know where you are on this topic. No, top-down governments speak a lot. They speechify. They're constantly making announcements. They are heavy on the propaganda. They want to get into the people's heads and control the thoughts in people's heads. So it'll be less vocal in terms of communicating what they are doing. They will not be telling us exactly what they are doing. Don't expect clarity from the beast system. Expect to always be on your toes. Expect to always be afraid of what new law is coming at 11.59 p.m. that's going to be fully active with the death penalty at 12 midnight the next day. That kind of thing. Less communication makes people uncertain. It makes people nervous. It breeds a culture of severe mistrust. This is how you can now understand all the prophecies that I brought here of snitches, of people telling on one another, of people being willing to be do doing stuff to their neighbor, doing stuff to their family member because of incentives that will be offered because of divide and rule policies. Well, the first one to do this gets this, but the other one then doesn't get much. And then people are pitted against one another. There's no brotherly love. You hear the Bible that says that the times will come when the love of man will grow cold. This is actually the depiction, the Holy Spirit now breaking down into the small granular pieces for our understanding how this thing happens. You read one sentence in the Bible and you just think the love of man will grow cold. Yes, it will grow cold when you want social credit score points. And then you turn in your neighbor for having one too many farm animals. If the, if the limit is four and then she's hiding a fifth one because she couldn't help it that her cow gave birth to twins. Then you watch her for a while and you know she had to. And then if she doesn't kill the extra calf, then you call the government in and then they come and get the woman and all her, her cows and then you never see them again. And then they even say to you, would you like to take over this farm for your service to the government? This is very dangerous. This is very North Korea, very kind of Soviet Union, old style mafia lifestyle. And let it never be forgotten what God is telling us here. This is not just an idle discussion. God is telling us that this is the reality we are going to have to live in. And he's naming the names that are going to do it. But because people haven't seen it happen in five minutes, because people haven't seen it happen the way they think, then they say it's a lie. But it's extremely dangerous to hear the future spoken so clearly with so many details. And then to be so ignorant as to say, well, it hasn't happened yet, so it's not going to happen. Are you serious? It hasn't rained yet, so there's no rain? This is what people are doing, and they will live with the choices that they're making. The government will be less transparent. It will be less communicative about what they're doing, but it certainly will not be less speechifying. They're going to be talking to us all the time, and God says that this government that Kamala Harris is bringing in will be far less accommodating than any other government in history. Accommodating means that if people strongly resist something, if people are not on board with something, if people are protesting something, that the government is aware of it and is able to pivot and find out why the people are unhappy and perhaps make some concessions. Accommodating means that to a certain extent, the government can hear the voice of the people, the government is able and willing to answer people's questions, and the government is willing to dialogue with them. If people want to parlay or have free speech about something going on in the country, that means they want to speak about it in a news broadcast. 
They want to speak it on the, about it on their YouTube channel. They want to make a TikTok about it. They want to talk about it on their podcast. Or they want to make comedy sketches about it and express themselves that way. Because free speech is protected in the country, they can. It is protected by the Constitution. Now, please hear what God is saying because this is the Holy Spirit's revelation because I don't know this woman. God says that this is not going to happen with Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris has a quick temper and she has very thin skin. Now, you've never seen this woman have an outburst in public. She usually seems to be jovial even when she's caught off guard. She'll laugh and she'll try to deflect. But God says that this behavior, this outer behavior is actually masking a quick temper and very thin skin. Thin-skinned people cannot handle criticism. Thin-skinned people cannot handle being made fun of on Saturday Night Live. Thin-skinned people cannot handle hearing many podcasts saying many things. That's not going to be tolerated. Listen to the Lord the same way that God described the personality of Vladimir Putin years ago in 2019. And then Tucker Carlson sat down with Vladimir Putin and Vladimir Putin has been saying all the things that I've been saying. And who told me this? The people who watch the blog, the people who watch the old things are sending me constant email. Celestial, this man said with his own mouth that he's interested in maps. This man said with his own map mouth that is interested in the old borders of Russia. But in 2019, I wrote these things on the blog that God says Putin is like this and Putin thinks like this and Putin does this. And these are Putin's motivations. So here are the motivations of your future president. She's extremely thin skinned and she has a quick temper. And God says that the veneer of civility, the ability to answer a question and say, oh no, that's not so. God says that beneath that thing, this woman gets very, very angry. And if she is within striking distance of the one who has made her angry, she will strike them. She will strike the people who make fun of her. This woman will be very rough with her detractors and she will be very partial to her friends. This is the kind of person who will, will make lavish gifts towards those who are in favor with the crown and then will confiscate the land and belongings. This is how old kings used to be. They would confiscate the land and belongings of the nobles that they were angry with and they would put those men in jail forever and then would take their land and their animals and give them as gifts to their personal friends, the ones who were called the king's favorites. That's what the Lord is saying, that she has a very thin cover of a civil behavior, but underneath that she gets very angry and she's going to strike at people who mock her and strike at people who oppose her but she will be extremely good to her friends think of this phrase i am a friend to my friends and an enemy to my enemies this is how regime government works favor is given to the favorites but it will be a very hard rod of sidelining and persecution to those who are seen as political detractors or enemies. Hear the word that God is saying. America, you are being retrained. You are being retrained into a system that most other democracies are already familiar with for quite some years. Beast system elements have been present in Europe for years. Block voting is one of them. Block voting will replace the current style of voting in the U.S., which means that only the candidate with the highest finally final tally will win. It's not about minorities anymore, and it's not about representation or any of that. It is going to be straight raw numbers, just the way that children vote. All those who want this, say yes. All those who are against, say no. You count the hands, and the one with the most hands wins. Block voting means low tally members will not even be able to approach the starting block. Automatically, by reason of unpopularity, they will be prevented. So, God is saying that America, through the beast system and through the things that are coming for us in the near future, America is being retrained to enter a system that a lot of other democracies are already familiar with, and Europe is one of them. The beast system is going to be 10 territories with 10 kings or basically represented by 10 crowns 
and the whole earth is going to be carved up and put into blocks. And this really surprised me when the Lord started talking about block voting because in a lot of modern countries, they don't really follow block voting because block voting is just basically 50 people standing together or let's make it even harder, an uneven number like 49 or 47 people standing together and then they say, all in favor of this and then you raise your hand and then all in favor of that you raise your hand and block voting takes no notice of is there fair representation for instance in a block of 49 people if you have 38 men and just a few women and then you name something for instance you say who wants to watch monday night football on tv there's only one tv obviously the 38 men are going to carry it even if only 30 of the men vote yes and eight of the men abstain there's no way for the women to end up able to watch what they want because it is block voting so it takes no notice of gender disparities it takes no notice of for instance ableism who's disabled who's not it takes no note of age is it older people versus younger people younger people more in favor and older people very few and then older people being marginalized now you're thinking a group of people and they say what activity should we do and then people go bike riding or mountain climbing and the older people are like no i just want to take a hike but there's only 11 older people and then everybody else is saying no we want more active stuff block voting is kind of very blind it's the it's very close to the early 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 forms of democracy democracy before it became a little bit more sophisticated and so god says that this kind of voting is not very well known in america and this is usually used for smaller style elections in the united states in the united states for instance the main race the presidential race there's no such thing as block voting to get on the ballot if you have enough money and you feel that you can do it and you meet the rest of the basic criteria, you can run for president. You can run for president if only your grandmother, your mother, and your cat are going to vote for you. You can get your three votes and that's still part of a democratic system here. In block voting, they're going to say only candidates who can raise this amount of money and get this amount of preliminary votes in their hometown can run. And then once you, even if you raise the money, if you can't get the preliminary votes, you are automatically disqualified from the ticket. This can be very dangerous. It can favor more popularity in one area. For instance, an area that has more people, a high concentration of people or high election tallies like New York or California will definitely be able to front more candidates than people in less populated areas of the country and so it's not done that way for a reason there are too many gaps but god says that in the b system it's basically raise your hand raise your hand all for this versus all for this and the best number is going to take it god says that america should expect constitutional reform to be on the table when kamala harris is in office and i've spoken about this i've shared the vision that i saw in the prophecy called Kamala Harris and the Beast, that Kamala Harris came to power and on day one she had that pen ready and she was scribbling away and she was scribbling away directly on the constitution and I said all those gray-haired lawmakers were staring at that woman in shock and horror and not a sing I mean their eyes, I said they did the cartoon eye pop, doing like that. And they were speechless, not a single one of them could say anything. She's not going to write on the actual constitution. We've already established that. She's just going to make such deep and brutal changes to it that in the end, it's going to seem like it was shredded. And the reason she's going to do that is because this woman has an assignment. She has her assignment as the first B system president. Of course, she's going to be elected according to American ways, but she's not an American president. If you listen to the prophecy that is called, you will have no idols left. It's about Donald Trump, something like that, about the fall of Dagon, the idol, and also the prophecy about Barack Obama that is called Ready Player One. All those prophecies, God was just giving them back to back, like one day, two days, two days later, three days later, the next day, two in the same day, like that. They all came in the September, October period of 2022, and the Lord kept repeatedly saying, 
the people who represent the beast system, the people who are responsible for bringing the beast system into reality right now, they do not care for their individual nationalities. They are all over the world. They're in all continents. They are leading. They are the top of, this, of the pyramid in all countries. They don't care about their personal nationalities. They don't care if they're French. They don't care if they're Angolan. They don't care if they're from... Um, Trinidad or whatever. They do not care. They are bounded with other concerns. They are bounded into one secret society. They are bounded into sworn oaths and allegiances to the devil himself. It is ridiculous in this day and age for people to say that Christianity is not a real religion when the people who are leading us are Luciferians. They are Satanists. They believe in the devil. They are serving a one world agenda, which is just a veneer. It is just a cover for Satan himself, for the devil himself. And so they don't care about allegiances. They don't have God bless America hearts inside them. They are working hard to establish Satan's kingdom on earth because just like with the Tower of Babel, they are building a new world order to challenge the lordship of God, to build their own world and completely destroy everything that was made by the hands of our father. Yeah. And they will stop at nothing. They don't care about where they come from. They don't care about the national anthem. They don't care about the people. They are working behind the scenes. And I've always said here that when they are finished, when their work is complete, they're going to absolutely do away with the masquerade. They are so tired of pretending to the various governments of the world that they care about what we think and how we feel and feeding us. They're going to stop feeding the populations because they feel that the earth is overcrowded. You should not be unaware of these things, especially if you are a parent. You should not be unaware of these things at all. And so God says that um, constitutional reform will be there. I saw Kamala absolutely destroying the constitution. I saw this in 2022. I saw her do it in 2020. And the two batches of prophecies concerning her are from 2020, before they came into power, during the time that that long 11 day, 12 day voting was going on, God was speaking that this woman will hold office in this country. And then all of a sudden in 2022 there were some prophecies concerning her and joe biden in 2021 but in 2022 september october god just kept bringing messages about this woman and i put all of them into a compilation video i posted it a few months ago i think towards the end of i will link it in i will link it in the comments of this video you have to wait a day or two um when i have time to watch this back that's when links will be gathered and then put so expect to see constitutional re reform when Kamala Harris is president. Expect to see discussions around the amendments and expect to see amendments being proposed to things that America holds sacred and has not touched in 100 years or more. One of those is free speech. The other is gun reform. Free speech is already being heavily affected in the United States. It's not being affected through constitutional reform. It is being affected through corporations and their policies. The government knows that if it touches the constitution and tries to make direct changes to free speech, people are going to light it up in this country. So the much more effective way has been to weaponize all the companies that give us the services through which we exercise free speech, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok. Every time I say something, the video gets a strike. Every time I say something, the video gets shadow banned here or there. Every time people subscribe here, they get unsubscribed. So by the way, if you are a subscriber, you have to constantly keep checking. At least do a wellness check on yourself just to make sure you're still following because I might post, I might be busy, then I might come and post double like today. And you won't even get an update. So you have to do your part so that you can stay glued here. But free speech has been greatly chopped 
because of corporations and their policies. And the corporation has a right to make its policy and say, oh, we consider this and this and this to be hate speech. And because nobody has actually gotten together and do, done a class action to sue and say, who are you to define speech in a nation for free speech? Your policies, your personal private company policy is unconstitutional because that has not happened. They've been able to erode so much ability to express oneself to the point where a simple company like PayPal will take it upon themselves to say that, if they find out that you have a social media and you're posting rhetoric, who are you to define rhetoric? How can PayPal, just the, the money moguls, right? The money people, what makes them qualify to decide what is rhetoric or what is harmful speech? They're not speech ex experts, they're money, money slingers. But this just goes to show to what extent they've overstepped. And we should not be unwise and think that the government is not behind that. The government is using these companies to do what it knows it can't do directly. Because to touch free speech will obviously trigger a firestorm in this country. But through the companies, we murmur and complain. But then we still have to comply if we want to keep our Twitter account, our Facebook account. And so it goes. But when she comes in they're not going to be hiding it anymore. They're going to be making these changes gradually and God says we should expect constitutional reform. And we should expect the amendments that they will propose to change to be stuff that America holds very sacred and hasn't touched in a hundred years or more. And that's gun reform and free speech. Gun reform policy is gonna take off during Kamala's tenure in office because the goal is to humble America and introduce her fully into the beast system. Human rights will be used as the vehicle to remove guns, so we can expect false flags and other destabilizing events to increase significantly as a means of getting, getting reform through. And so uh, gun reform policy, the Lord has always been tying gun reform policy to Kamala's time in office, that Kamala is going to be the lady who is going to strongly push that America should get rid of guns and they're going to say it's in the best interest of the country, it's for the greater good, it's unsafe. They're going to say, look at all the school shootings. They're going to say, look at all the gun violence and all the crimes. And the Lord is directly tagging here and saying that we can expect false flags to increase at this time. We can expect destabilizing events to increase at this time. So you cannot sell that you're going to get rid of guns if nothing is happening in the national consciousness that involve the use of guns. And people will always say, no, Celestial, this is not so. Uh, the people are actually very dangerous. They're using the guns and we shouldn't have guns. And I don't sit on this debate one side or the other. I don't own or use guns. And so I'm not going to say anything about it. There are people who own guns, they use it for hunting, they use it for recreation, and the Constitution says that they have a right to do so. So a person's personal feelings have nothing to do with it. And if more people could understand that, perhaps there would be less contention in this nation as a whole. What is important here is that you can't take the guns away by simply saying guns are bad. Because there's always going to be an argument made against it that no, guns are not bad, it's the people and things like that. And back and forth, it will go. The way they're going to solve this is simply by having more gun-related incidents. They're not going to be organic gun-related incidents. They're going to be staged gun-related incidents. And perhaps in the past, they would be staged and nobody would die. But now we will see blood. People will die because it has to be convincing. The last time they blew up the building... The fire was very hot, but the fire forgot to burn up all the passports. And so they probably fired all the people who used to stage those things and gotten a brand new bunch of Gen Z who will leave nothing to chance. So they're going to stage new things. I have spoken here endlessly of the sleeper boys that they are going to train and send out to do things and then shoot the boys before the boys can say, but I was paid to do this. Whether those boys are in their right mind or whether they're in their MK Ultra mind, I do not know. I just know that they will send out people to do things and then the cops will come and say, freeze, freeze. But it's the paid cop who has been told, when you see the killer, it's on site. You're, you're going to be shooting him before you say freeze. 
you're going to shoot him 10 times before you say drop your weapon. So shoot him 10 times and then just holler drop your weapon and hope that nobody tells the press, I heard bullets and then I heard the cops say drop your weapon. It's going to be like that and they're going to take the guns away. And the reason they're going to take the guns away is the same reason they disarmed, they took the guns away in Australia and Canada. You cannot enter the beast system with a weaponized population. In fact, if you remember the previous dream that I shared, it's called a dream of the new America. How are you going to have heavy military presence on the street and then also have a heavily armed population? How is that going to work? You have a soldier who's on edge and you have a, a, a Navy veteran, maybe 25 years, who's also on edge and both have guns. This is not a good situation and it doesn't, it doesn't automatically hand victory over to the beast system. So they're going to endeavor by all means to take the guns away. So you have heard here, with the grace and help of the Holy Spirit, an extremely detailed prophecy of a time that is to come. People hearing this prophecy and dismiss it, you're on another level. You, you literally have my respect. If you can listen to this much detail, this much explanation, it's all written down. The Lord gave it to me and has given me the grace to explain it so that even people who are not interested in government will be able to follow. Let us open our ears. Let us hear what the Lord is saying. A hard impact is coming and that hard impact will not even be so much because people will put guns on the street or in the future, uh, be hunting people. The era of Kamala Harris is going to be an era of bloodshed. Let me make it very clear now. The Lord is not talking about that aspect. That aspect can never be left out. If you have not heard the prophecy, communism in America, that prophecy will sober anyone. Communism in America is purely detailing when Kamala hits her stride, whether she gets one term or two. When she hits her stride, when it's her turn at last at bat, the way that woman is going to style herself is going to be right after Chairman Mao, complete with the witch hunts, complete with the midnight dread, complete with coming to people's homes in the dead of night and perhaps taking one family member, perhaps a family member who did a comedy sketch about her and then it was funny and then a year later when the government becomes more totalitarian. It might be in the beginning when she comes in then you do a funny sketch and make her look the way you think and then it's funny and you get featured in the New York Times. Two, three years later, maybe in second term, year five, when it is now dark and foreboding, when it is now North Korea, then that sketch comes up and now they get your address and they come to your house and now it's not so funny anymore and now it's unlawful detention and execution and you never come home. They were killing people in that dream. I always talk about blood on the roads. This is not pig blood. It's going to come from people. They were killing people in that dream. People were going to bed at 7.30 and 8 p.m. The entire house would be dark, everybody pretending to sleep but people were actually keeping watch at the windows because they didn't want to go to sleep in case the truck would come to their house. They wanted to have a chance to run. They wanted to at least have a chance. People would watch as their neighbor would be brought out. Sometimes just the father, sometimes the entire family and bundled into those trucks and taken away. You've only seen these in the old spy movies. You've never seen it here, but I'm not watching the old spy movies. This is what the Lord is saying is coming to this country because this is what the beast system is going to be like here. And this form of government is going to be happening in many countries around the world, if not all. Killing of political enemies, elimination of political enemies, extreme consolidated consolidation of power and absolutely decimating the competition, getting rid of your every enemy. Remember, I'm always using the name of that Cambodian dictator, Paul Pot. God says America will be like during the reign of Pol Pot, P-O-L-P-O-T. Please do the diligence, do the due diligence and look it up. You've heard the word of the Lord, Kamala Harris and the Beast, part two. This word was given to me just yesterday, February 24th, 2024. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. 
look under the video perhaps if it's not today you can look under the video in a day or two look in the description box and you'll see all the information for where you can follow the channel where you can interact with the channel thank you to all of you who are a blessing to this ministry there is absolutely no compulsion on you to do that but thank you to those of you who see me you honor my work you're praying for me you're praying for um for me to be strong in this work and the lord indeed is my strength it is my great privilege it is my great privilege to be able to represent jesus christ like this to so many people around the world in my generation if you had asked me previously in the early years of my christianity what would I see myself doing? I never ever thought that the Lord was going to select and choose me to represent him in the end times, to be his voice, to be his mouthpiece, to be his visible face and his helping hand out to the nations. The Lord Jesus Christ is a helping hand. Even if he is smacking our hands, we deserve it. We have done the Lord so wrong. We have done ourselves so wrong. The church of Jesus Christ has abdicated her responsibility altogether talk about dropping the ball talk about fumbling an opportunity this world is sick with sin it's sick with immorality it's sick with compromise even within Christians most Christians have a split heart but I am so blessed of God to be chosen for this time and for this purpose and it is my honor to serve it really is it is it is 25 minutes to 5 a.m. in New York City right now, but I bless God because he told me, do the second one. Just power through, just power through and do them both and I will be with you. And see, I may be a little hoarse, but we've come to the end of yet another message. This is yet another message to cross off the list. There's still over a hundred prophecies yet not made but God will give the time God will give the stamina God will give the grace and whether people stop coming here or not I will always be here because I don't like to leave, leave things unfinished so I am Celestial and this is the master's voice God bless you and thank you for your support and thank you for your prayers and concerning the email um, people you send me a lot of email I have to address this I am one person you can see that I do not have a body double your emails contain sensitive things, and so I'm not going to let anybody else read them. Nobody else has access to the dashboard of the blog, my Facebook, this channel, um, or, you, or my emails. I'm the one who's monitoring all those things. You send a lot of emails. One thing that I have to say, I can't give you a personal prophecy. It's not that I can't, but I'm not going to start divining and, and trying to download things about you. I don't do that. I don't give people personal prophecies. When the Lord has a word for someone, it's usually people that I'm in connection with or people that I can meet and then the Lord will have something to directly give that person. But I'm not one of these inbox prophets. I'm sorry, but so many of you have been taught so wrong and you have been bamboozled and you have been lied to to the point that you want to pay people for prophecy you can't pay for a prophecy Simon the sorcerer almost got sent to hell Peter was so angry when he did that trying to buy the Holy Spirit Peter was about to damn that man to hell because he was so upset that somebody thought they could offer money for what is spiritual sanctity something that is holy you can't buy the Holy Spirit you can't offer money for a prophecy prophecy all these prophets that tell you to sow a seed so they can prophesy to you they're con artists they're liars they're two steps away from the lip of hell you should run away from people like that because anybody who's close to the lip of hell when it's time to fall in they start going like this and the next thing you know they want to catch on to you and take them with you flee those people the way you live your successful christian life is not through i need a word here i need a word there here my pastor used to say this bless his soul there's a ton of words. Oh, I need a word. There's thousands of them are in here. There's plenty of words in here. If you're depressed, if you're afraid, if you're sick, all the words are here. The problem is the difficulty is not knowing where to go, not knowing how to start. And in many cases, being so poorly taught that you think it is the job of a spiritual authority to open this book and start searching this is the word of god in the beginning was the word let us look at it
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This is John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Word. Every time you come to this table, you are partaking of something that is more holy than prophecy itself. Prophecy is an organic function within the body of Christ. It is one of the fivefold ministry gifts. You cannot say that you are a prophet unless God chose you from the time that he was creating you in your mother's womb and called you to be a steward of his words. Prophecy is a gift. It is also a function. It is also a calling. It is also carrying with it a mantle. No one can take this office to themselves if they are not called to it. And God is never happy if someone tries to run away from the function. Higher than that is the word of God. Jesus himself said that John the Baptist was the greatest of the prophets. And yet anyone who believes is greater than John. The problem is that in order to believe, you need to know the material. If you are sick, it is time for you to use the same cell phone that you are using to send me a letter. I'm not saying that I won't pray for you. Even if I'm not able to write you back, the mail is overwhelming. In fact, overwhelming is being polite. It is crippling at this stage. It is multiple thousands of email and you guys know that I work. And like I said, it's also almost 5 a.m. in the morning here in New York. I will pray for you. I add all the serious email to our prayer roster and we're praying for people who they've taken your child. I can't imagine. But at the same time, Jesus is available to you. And there's no better time than now to get into the word and start to build the relationship that you need to be standing on when the prophecy starts to come to pass. You need to be standing on Christ, the solid rock. When this message starts to come to pass, you will need him so bad. You will need to know where to go so you can take the same cell phone, go online and type in prayers for healing, prayers for family restoration, prayers to overcome anger, prayers to break the spirit of lust with fasting. It is time now, if the foundation isn't there or if the foundation is shaky, the foundation is compromised, sometimes your foundation isn't shaky, sometimes you're just tired. It happens, we're human. It happens. You bear a lot of burdens. You meet a lot of rejection. People say a lot of things and then you get tired. But you have to know that this light was the light of men. Jesus Christ is here. He was in the beginning with God. Everything that we see was made with him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. That includes you. That literally means that patterned all through your body and your DNA is the story of Jesus Christ in your making. He was instrumental in your making. The Spirit brought you into being through the word of your Lord. You are here at his desire. There is purpose for you and it is just too early to be flaming out and quitting. It is just too early. It is time now to get into the Bible. It is time now to get off the social media and get into the Bible. It is time to decide if you're a morning person, you'll do your Bible readings, the stronger parts in the morning. If you're a night person, you do it at night. If you're a wise person, you'll do it in morning and night because wise people sow their seed in summer and winter. But there's no shortcut. I figured this thing out long back when I was young. There's no shortcut. There's no shortcut to anointing. There's no shortcut to answers. There's no short, shortcut to miracles. You will walk through this Bible or you won't get anything. You will walk through this Bible, I'm telling you, or you will not get anything. This is the way. This is the path. This is it. You have to read it. You have to read it. You must read it. Every day. 
This is the vitality of your bones. You are sick. Read the Bible. Read the Proverbs and say to the Lord, Lord, you said that your word is health to all my bones. A lot of people, you're battling cancer. That thing goes and sits in the bone marrow. It starts eating at the bone marrow. That's where our life is. Confess the word of God. You said, Lord, that your word is health to all my bones. This thing is in my bones. Heal me, Lord. There's no shortcut. You can't come to me and expect that I'm going to wave my hand over the place the way Naaman expected that prophet Elisha was just going to wave his hand. And You can't write me in the middle of the day and ask me if God gave me a word for you. Come on, let's be realistic. I don't know you. We've not met. How on earth will God just randomly come up to me in a team meeting and say, by the way, this and that? The Bible makes sense. It's spiritual and it's powerful, but it also follows patterns of sense. Even the things in it that seem fantastical, they follow patterns of sense. Once you know the root, for instance, of where Nephilim come from, how the fallen sinned with women, how Satan was experimenting. The falling were sinning against animals, birds, fish. You can read all about that in Jasher and things like that. Then you understand why we have mermaids. You understand why we have this. Then nothing is too fantastical. It is only high-minded people who think that they are above God. And the Bible says that because they won't hallow God in their mind. What does Roman 1 say? That they become fools. There's nothing to be done for a fool. The only fool who is useful is a fool who's willing to repent and be made wise by the counsel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you and stay in the race. And until I see you again, goodbye.